Hi, this is Jim at Facilis Technology. Uh, I'm going to go over the steps you'll take to install the WAN link client and how to configure it uh, to work with your network uh, and your server in the facility from uh, the wide area network client that you'll be that you'll be logging in from. Uh, so first thing I'll do is show you the two files that you need, and these are they. Uh, the HTML UI shell uh, is basically the user user interface software that we use for the console. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is just uh, extract that and launch that. Uh, that's going to give me a, a normal installer. It's going to ask for my password. And I'll enter that in and be done. Now from that point forward I can get rid of that because uh, that's no longer going to be required. Every version of console that I, log, uh, that I launch from here will use that same UI installer unless it needs to change for some reason. Uh, so let me go ahead and extract this and launch this as well. This is my hub Mac client version 8.2.2. That's the version that supports the WAN link uh, connectivity, uh, encrypted and authenticated connectivity over a wide area network. Uh, so I'll install this, same thing, gives me a password to throw in there, and I'll exit out of that, and I can get rid of that as well since I'll have the uh, installed software uh, right here in my applications area uh, of my hard drive. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just dock this to make it easier for myself. And the first time I launch this, I'm going to see basically nothing, no volumes, no servers, um, and because I have no search addresses here. Uh, so in order to first link up to the server, I need a search address. It needs to go where to know where to look uh, to find that server. And I happen to have something that was maybe sent to me from my administrator or, or my IT person about what the, what the IP address is that I should be putting in here for a search address. So I'll put that in. For me, it's 71.184.247.22. And the port could be anything, uh, but we're going to make it 3862 because that's the port that's mapped into the server that I want to see uh, at the router in the facility. So there is some IT work to be done at the router, but once you have this, then you have direct connection to the facility server or servers within the facility. Uh, so I'll go ahead here and I'll see that, yep, I have a server that's showing up here, and the server is Facilis 8D, and remote management is enabled. That's a setting that I can choose whether or not they'll be able to remotely manage my system from the, uh, the server in the facility or from any administrator console. Uh, but I see no volumes here. Uh, no volumes here because I, I'm not an authorized user yet. Uh, so let me go over to my server, uh, and I can show you sort of why that is. Um, so from here, I see I have all of my clients uh, that exist on this Facilis 8D server. And I see that I have my lab mini is unauthorized. Uh, by default, only local area network clients will be automatically authorized to use the server. Um, but since I'm a wide area network, I need to change the settings on this particular workstation so that I am authorized for not just LAN only, but LAN and Internet. Uh, and so once I do that, I get an authorized uh, notice here, uh, and then I can go back here and hit refresh and see volumes. So those two volumes are accessible to me because I'm logged in as desktop user lab mini. Uh, if I want to be a, a user and password, if I want to enter a user and password to have more access to more volumes, I would just do it through here. Uh, the simple user and password login, the same way I do it uh, as a client in the facility. Uh, but from here, I can just mount volumes. You see those two will just mount to my desktop as they would uh, if I was in the facility. Uh, open up normally, um, and you'll see the files I have here. Open them up. That's about a 40 meg file. Uh, it won't show real-time playback because I'm on VNC here from home. Uh, but you, you'll see that it's pretty easy to move around and, and search and, and find the files that you need, copy them down if you need to, or use them directly in an application. And let me open up uh, Premiere here, uh, and I'll just show you now if I want to just grab a few of these files here and drag them over to my project. It's not going to be as fast as local area network because you're simply dealing with an internet connection and not a local area fast 10 gig or even a 1 gig connection. Uh, but here I can just go ahead and add this in, hit play, and I get a pretty good playback on this. Uh, these are probably, you know, 6 to 8 megabytes per second files. They're proxy files, 1080 raster, so they're not the biggest files out there, but um, 
you know, you can get all the way down to H.264, you know, four or six megabit files uh, for really low bandwidth uh, internet connections, and you'll be able to play things in real time. Um, so this is just the information about how to get to it from the client side. From the server side, you will have to do some IT work on the router to make sure the port is forwarded from whatever you choose the incoming port to be to port 861 on the server. Uh, but from that point, this is really it. And you can go back to the facility now uh, if you want to and, and sort of open up that same project in the facility. And since you're working off the same volume and the same path is there, you'll be able to open that same project up in the facility as you're using uh, on the remote client. Uh, so any questions on that, please give us a call or email us at sales at or support at We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks a lot.